the center of our vision for national renewal is an ambitious campaign to reform international trade. For decades, the international trading system has been easily exploited by nations acting in very bad faith. As jobs were outsourced, a small handful grew wealthy at the expense of the middle class. In America, the result was 4.2 million lost manufacturing jobs and $15 trillion in trade deficits over the last quarter century. The United States is now taking that decisive action to end this grave economic injustice. It is well known that the rise of China poses a threat to the global hegemon of the United States. Upon being elected in 2016, Donald Trump made it clear that his time as president would see the challenge of China answered. Trump saw the trade imbalance between the two countries, which was as high as $345.6 billion in 2019, as a considerable problem to the United States and has been heavily involved in the trade war between the two countries. This video aims to explain precisely why the issue is much worse than people think, and why Trump's attempts to reduce the current account deficit have been completely unsuccessful. First, it is important to outline some basic information. A current account is a nation's measurement of imports and exports, plus net income and direct payments. A current account deficit implies that a country is importing more than it is exporting, whilst a current account surplus implies that a country is exporting more than they are importing. As of the end of 2019, the United States had a current account deficit of $109.8 billion. China, meanwhile, continues to maintain a current account surplus. This data is not specifically related, as a current account makes up more than just the trade imbalance between the two countries. However, as this video aims to explain, the trade imbalance between the two does play a significant role in these current account measurements. As the graph shows, China has slowly been accumulating a colossal quantity of foreign exchange reserves. Most of these reserves are in US dollars, because that is the currency used in 90% of global transactions. The reason for this has likely been non-sterilized intervention through the foreign exchange market in order to keep stability between the US dollar and Chinese yen. The foreign currency reserves are often, also, used to influence monetary policy and back liabilities. This has significant repercussions on current accounts. The vast majority of China's foreign currency reserves are in US dollars due to the fixed exchange rate mechanism employed by China. In order to benefit its export market, China sets the value of the yen equal to a basket of currencies that include the dollar. Part of the reason why the foreign currency reserves are so high are because when the US dollar loses value, China will often purchase dollars through US Treasury bonds in order to support it and maintain the fixed exchange rate. Yes, that's right, the Chinese central bank actively maintains a policy of purchasing US Treasury bonds in order to support their exchange rate. There are several implications of this on current accounts. First, it has allowed China to gain a current account surplus. This is because, over the past few years, China has begun selling off some of its foreign currency reserves. By selling more than it purchases on the international market, China has managed to tip the current account balance in its favour. This is significant in relation to the US-Chinese trade imbalance and the trade war declared by the Trump administration because China was undergoing these actions in the years prior to the 2016 US election. Second, this has increased the US current account deficit because, up until 2019, China was using this policy to become the largest lender to the United States. By purchasing so many treasury bonds, the Chinese have played a significant role in keeping interest rates low in the United States. Those who have watched my recent video on the true cause of the 2020 financial crisis will know precisely how dangerous keeping low interest rates can be. The result of this is that it has decreased savings, which, according to the macroeconomic formula, increases the current account deficit. This alone is enough to explain the trade imbalance, but it is possible to analyze this even further when looking at how this has an impact on competition between businesses in the US and China. China has a much lower standard of living, 
with a GDP per capita of $9,771, which means that companies are able to pay lower wages. As a result, China is able to mass produce cheap goods. With low interest rates, thus higher consumption and lower savings, much of that money is going to the cheaper Chinese products as opposed to the more expensive US goods where highest standards of living, with a GDP per capita of $62,795 prevent these companies from lowering their wage expenditure in order to cover lower prices. The purchasing of Chinese commodities in the US further tips the trade imbalance in China's favor. The ability to control US interest rates gives China an immense amount of power. They are able to keep the US in a constant state of short-term consumption, reducing savings and increasing levels of imports. This keeps the US economy extremely fragile. Without any real savings, households are not prepared for shocks to the economy. Furthermore, increased consumption leads to higher levels of debt and malinvestment in the economy, which eventually contracts and creates a credit crunch or recession. China's purchasing of US treasuries has not been addressed by the US government. Instead, the US have attempted to reduce their current account deficit through protectionism. This has not worked because of the twin deficit theory. According to the twin deficit hypothesis, there is a link between a budget deficit and a current accounts deficit. This can be explained through the macroeconomic formula, y equals c plus i plus g plus nx. y is GDP, c is consumption, i is investment, g is government expenditure, and nx is net exports. s is savings, t is taxes slash government income. This can be rearranged into nx equals S minus I plus T minus G, because S equals Y minus C minus T, which, when combined with the original formula, leads to S equals G minus T plus NX plus I. According to this formula, if a government runs a deficit, government expenditure is greater than tax revenues or investment is greater than savings, then this will result in a negative level of net exports, and thus a current account deficit. To break down the theory beyond formulas, the idea is that when a government runs a deficit, there are reduced national savings. Reduced savings result in the government looking to foreign investments as a source of borrowing, which is facilitated because lower savings apply upward pressure on domestic interest rates, meaning that the capital has to flow in from abroad. Inward capital flows result in currency appreciation because more people are purchasing the currency in order to invest from abroad or provide capital, relieving the upward pressure on interest rates which results in it becoming more expensive for the initial country to export and cheaper to import, thus generating a current account deficit. One of the most significant case studies in support of this comes from economists Blue Dawn and Lay, who conducted a study and found that fiscal consolidation of 1% led to, roughly, raise current account balance to GDP ratio by 0.6%, indicating a link between the two. To bring this theory back to the original topic, the US has been running a budget deficit, thus generating an increased current account deficit. The widening fiscal deficit contributes to a wider current account deficit, a broader measure of trade, to around $700 billion by 2020, from just $465 billion last year. Despite Trump repeatedly stating that he wanted to implement protectionist policies in order to reduce the deficit with China, the continual expansion of US budget deficits simply increases the reliance on foreign investment, necessitating an increase in the current account deficit. The current account deficit doesn't have to widen if household savings increase or private investment decreases, but estimates show that these are unlikely, as a result, indicating that the current account deficit is likely to only get worse. Instead of protectionism or any other attempt to limit the free market, the US government should take two steps to reduce the trade imbalance and prevent China from exploiting US Treasury purchases. First, the US should reduce their budget deficit. As explained, there is a link between budget deficits and current account deficits. By reducing the budget deficit, or even gaining a surplus, the US government can hope to also reduce their reliance on imports. The safest way to attempt to reduce the deficit would be to curb expenditure, as opposed to increasing taxes. Increasing taxes would send severe shocks into the economy, whilst curbing expenditure allows for opportunities to privatize industries and generate growth through competition. Second, the US should stop the Federal Reserve from engaging in treasury bonds. 
Not only would this prevent China from forcing low interest rates to stabilize their exchange rate, it would also prevent many of the other issues of expansionary monetary policy and QE that I have explained in my video on the 2020 financial crisis and that Mises talks about in the Austrian business cycle theory. Ultimately, it is highly unlikely the US will do either of these things. There is little political incentive for such action. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, leaving a comment, subscribing, follow me on Twitter or joining my Discord. Thank you for watching.